Shalom Aleichem, my dear brothers and sisters. Today I want to talk to you about racism in Judaism. Because I saw a debate between a Muslim and a Jew, and the Muslim made a comment that he believes that, the Juda that Judaism is the most racist religion. And what I think he meant, I don't think he really meant racist, because in Judaism we have such a thing called conversion, where you know a person who is born, let's say, doesn't matter which race, black, Asian, Hispanic, he can convert to Judaism and he becomes a full-fledged Jew just like the rest of us. So I don't think he really meant racist. But I think maybe what he meant is um, something called maybe religionists, if there is such a term. Meaning that as Jews we deal different with fellow Jews as opposed to you know other people. Uh, and when I say Jews, I mean Jews in faith. Meaning somebody who's a Jew by faith, whether he converted or born as a Jew, doesn't matter. So maybe that's what he meant. And this is what I would like to comment on. Now, there is some truth to it. Meaning the Torah commanded us certain commandments that only applies to fellow Jews. So, for example, interest. You know, as Jews, we are not allowed to charge interest to a fellow Jew. Another example, forgiving of the debt on the seventh year. According to the Torah, on every seventh year, which is the called the, the year Shemitah, a Jew is uh, automatic, like his uh, the loan of another Jew between two Jews, right, gets automatically forgiven uh, on the seventh year. I mean, if a Jew borrowed from another Jew something like money, and then the seventh year passed, then that loan gets forgiven automatically. And now, if, let's say, Jew borrowed from a non-Jew, then that does not get forgiven automatically. Or the opposite. If a non-Jew borrowed from a Jew, that does not also get forgiven automatically. That's another example. Another example is uh, returning of the uh, collateral. So, for example, a Jew borrowed from another Jew and um, gave him a collateral. So, if that collateral is something that's, you know, absolutely necessary for his life, like, let's say, a pillow to sleep on, or some kind of a tool that the other one uses for his uh, livelihood in his line of work, then that collateral has to be returned every night or every day, depending on what it is, and then picked up again the next day. Meaning a, a Jew who's holding the collateral is not allowed to just hold it and says, I don't care about you, whether you need it or not. You know, I'm, you owe me, and this is the collateral, and I'm, you know and I can hold it. No, like he's not allowed to do it. He has to return the collateral every day and then pick it up again so that the other person can really use it. Now, so these are some, some of the examples. And if you'll notice, all these examples are really, you know, not something that are within a normal standard of morality when it comes to dealings with people. These uh, examples are something that's above the normal standard of morality. Therefore, what God is trying to do with these laws is not in order to for Jews, you know, to be looking down upon the non-Jews and, you know, not apply these laws, but the opposite. What God wants us to do is arouse a brotherly love between fellow Jews, which is different. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Let's say there's an old man. And he has grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Let's say he has 100 great-grandchildren. He has all these great-grandchildren. And he sees two of his great-grandchildren playing with each other. Two boys. And they're playing with each other. And then one of the boys uh, tells his brother, Listen, I'm going to trade you that toy for my toy. Would you like to trade? And this great-grandfather comes to them and tells them, Listen, this is your brother. He's from the same mother and from the same father as you are. Why don't you just give it to him for free? Just give it to him for free. Don't trade him. Don't trade your toy for to him. Now, can you really say that this great grandfather is teaching this great grandchild to dislike other cousins of his? No, it's completely different. He's trying to teach him that when it comes to your own brother, there should be a different, a higher standard than the normal honest standard when it comes to you know other sibling other cousins of his so therefore you know this is uh, you know for the grand from the for the great grandfather all his great grandchildren are the same but when it comes to those 
two of the great grandchildren that are from the same father and mother. He's just telling them that when it comes to dealings between two of you, you're supposed to act differently on a higher standard than you know you would deal with your cousins or uh, extended families. So this is what I think the Torah is uh, teaching us with these laws, you know, and and in fact, you know, as humans, we are what's called a social species. You know, God did not want, God never intended for us to be a whole one family of humanity with no differences between us. In fact, this is how it was before the Tower of Babel. And then what did God do? God split the nation, split languages, right? And therefore, this is when people became into different groups. And um, different cultures, different languages. And there's absolutely nothing wrong from the point of view from the Torah, there's nothing wrong for people to be different. You know, as long as you treat honestly and, you know, you treat, uh, you, uh, you, you're being nice and everything towards, you know, all the cultures, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the fact that, uh, you know, humanity are different and, you know, we have to accept each other the way we are. Now, um, I'm not talking about difference in religion. That's something else. I'm talking about difference in culture, languages, whatever it may be. Um, and uh, in fact, why didn't God make us like uh, trees? Let's say, you know, there are trees over there where, let's say, a person is born and, you know, he grows up and he has absolutely no feeling towards uh, his brothers or towards his parents. To him, everybody, all the old people are the same. All the young people are the same. Doesn't matter if it's his relatives or his brothers. Doesn't matter. Everybody is the same. Why didn't God make us like that? God made us a species that, you know, we live in a family where we kind of close bond, closely bond with each other. Why did God do it? Because He wants us to have these feelings of love to those who are closest to us. There's nothing wrong with that. And um, in fact, I would say that when a person loves his parents or his brothers, loves them very much, automatically this love is going to extend to others as well. It's not the opposite. You know, if a person really sincerely thinks that, you know, to me, my parents are just like the the neighbor's parents, absolutely no difference. In reality, he just doesn't love his parents. And that's why he f feels that way. But a normal person who loves his parents, in fact, the Torah commands us to respect father and mother. Right? So could somebody actually claim that, oh, you see, the Torah is racist. It tells you to respect father and mother, meaning that when it comes to neighbors, father and mother, you don't have, do not have to respect them. Does that really say that? No. When it comes to your father and mother, the Torah raises the standard of dealings. And that does not diminish from the way we're dealing with others, with the parents of the others. And in fact, you know, I'll tell you something else. In Judaism... We believe that um, people of other faiths, as long as they observe the seven laws that God gave to Noah, then those people, even though they're not Jewish Jews in faith, they have a share in the world to come, meaning they can still go to heaven, as long as they observe the seven laws that God gave to Noah. And with all honesty, I don't know of any other religion that has that. Meaning, you know, is there any, maybe there is, I don't know, I don't know all the religions, maybe somebody can help me out. But is there any other religion which says that not necessarily those that follow our religion will go to heaven, but even those that follow other religion, as long as they do certain things, they can go to heaven. Is there such a religion that says this other than Judaism? I don't know, but in Judaism we do believe that. So I'm not sure how it's, how one Per, how a person can even think that um, Judaism is, or you know, Jews are racist, or Judaism is a racist religion. And so, thank you for watching. If you want to have a, if you have a question, please comment. If you want to, you know, just discuss, please comment. Or if you want to rebuke my answer and challenge it, please comment. Because you know, one thing, talking to the camera, cam camera cannot answer back. So, if you have uh, constructive arguments, I would love to hear about it. Thank you.